Let's talk about Broadcom and AI. Now, interesting, right, Pat? We've been covering Broadcom a lot more closely yeah. over the past few months because of um, a lot of it had to do with the VMware deal. You and I have been watching this deal, talking a lot about its stature, trying to help the market understand. You know, I would say that we've both, after getting under the hood, looking at the innovation thesis, talking to a lot of executives, including your time with CEO Hawk Tan, I think we've probably come to the conclusion that uh, Broadcom's a fairly misunderstood um, company. Totally, totally, totally. Yeah, and the company's been a lot more communicative as well, which, I mean, it has to go both ways, right? Yeah, and it's, it's, I'd say it's more misunderstood by its customer slash the overall IT community that consumes its product than it is by its investors. I think it's, it's a bit of a darling among investors because uh, Hock Tan and the leadership team run that business for the street. I mean, they definitely understand the return on cash, the return on, um, you know, investment capital, the return on, uh, you know, the, the acquisitions, they run lean, they run mean, they know how to invest in products that are growth oriented, and they, they know how to maximize profitability of products that are sunsetting. And a lot of people don't love that. But you know what, in the end, you have to run a business to be successful. And that success means businesses have to make money. Now, Broadcom, you know, well known for a lot of things like routing, switching chips, network, you know, doesn't necessarily get a lot of conversation around AI, though. And in their high end, you know, switch family, um, they do have, you know, the Jericho line. And this past uh, week, they came out talking about Jericho 3 AI Ethernet switch. And the company came out with a somewhat um, bold position that they have some adv advantages in their technology over NVIDIA and the InfiniBand, pro InfiniBand product. Um, and, you know, as a very, uh, and Pat, I'm not as familiar with cost, but what I understand is they have a lower cost, higher performing option, um, and they offer something like a 10% performance improvement, uh, enabling the network to pay for itself. So, you know, they, they talked about a number of fabric innovations, uh, including load balancing, congestion-free operation, zero impact failover, and ultra high radix were the things that they, they focused on. But they basically looked uh, at the workload against the throughputs of InfiniBand um, at a number of different message sizes um, and a, a number of different speeds. And basically what they found was the fabric that they've created was more performant at all of the different message sizes than InfiniBand. Um, and so, you know, it's a really interesting sort of inflection because the other thing they're also claiming, Pat, is power reduction. Now, I put out an article this week on Market Watch where I talked about some of the interesting competitors coming up against NVIDIA. And while I still think NVIDIA, the thesis that they have the most opportunity in AI um, because of their positioning, I did uh, call out sustainability as a big focal area and something that they're going to have to watch because GPUs are a bit of power hogs. But on the networking side, I didn't really, re I didn't really reflect on that very much. Yeah. But, but with uh, a Jericho 3 AI, Pat, they're saying that their fabric offers something like a 40% power reduction. Um, it's saying lowest power and cost optical interconnect, 25% system power reduction against pluggable optics. So they're coming out and making some claims of some very strong performances um, on that side. So while Broadcom isn't making GPUs or, or uh, you know, ASICs right now for you know, AI training and inference, we can't forget about the fabric, how fast data can move uh, as such a key and critical part of success uh, for this technology. And Broadcom, if they can offer a more efficient, lower priced product, will be very attractive to a number of different companies that are going to be getting in the game. Um, and this could be a really exciting product for Broadcom and another competitor that NVIDIA is going to have to be watching out for. Yeah, uh, Broadcom is an absolute uh, connectivity beast of a company. And, uh, you know, what, if I'm looking at their wired, I mean, they go all the way from the front hall to the back hall, enterprise access. They do metro aggregation, part of the metro core, the core, the DCI and the data center and inside of the data center. Uh, they connect fleets and they also uh, connect racks uh, together. Uh, so. They, they really are uh, incredible. Uh, one of the important parts about uh, doing training and, and inference is that you have to scale. You can't do that on a single GPU or an ASIC. Uh, the workload has to share a common uh, memory memory plane, 
right? You, you, you know, we talk about these 65 billion parameter models. Uh, you, you have to have a common data plane, uh, sorry, a common memory plane to be able to do that. And the way you can do that, the only way you can do that is by networking the racks uh, together that have the GPUs uh, in them. And, you know, it's very rarely that somebody goes uh, after uh, an, an NVIDIA. And this is, you know, to me, which which made this uh, so, so exciting. And essentially what they said is, hey, use our much lower cost Ethernet connectivity to connect your GPUs than this super expensive uh, uh, InfiniBand, right? And the case they made was, hey, we have superior port speed, uh, reducing uh, the tiers and cluster sizes, load balancing, congestion management, telemetry, job completion time, multi-vendor support, i.e. Ethernet, uh, and TCO, which is related to uh, cost. So definitely looking like a little mini skirmish or a mini war a skirmish is, is coming up on, on the network side. And it makes you know, perfect sense also why, you know, reinforcing one of the reasons that NVIDIA bought Mellanox, which is to essentially uh, 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 partake in the revenue and uh, be on the edge of creating training and inference uh, clusters. You know, we, we hear AWS talk uh, when they're talking about their AI solutions as much about their super clusters as they do about the actual uh, chips themselves. So this is a big deal, uh, something uh, to watch, and yet another example of Broadcom innovating out there in the market, right? Higher performance, lower cost, and a lot of other att better attributes um, than, uh, than InfiniBand. And by the way, the InfiniBand Ethernet uh, debate is, you know, is only 10 years old. OK, uh, but but the increase in performance and capabilities of Ethernet uh, are are kind of a new thing. So fun stuff. It is. And, uh, you know, we, we couldn't make it to the list today, Pat, but, uh, you know, it's been a bit of a of a you know, I think NVIDIA is doing fine. But, you know, I got some press calls this week about Microsoft building an AI chip. We're not going to talk about that here today, but I'm saying. The competition's on the rise here. Companies yeah. are looking to do it more efficiently. They're looking to find ways to network cheaper, to do it with lower power, to build ASICs, to run certain models. So the the era of just the all-encompassing, big, powerful GPU uh, is also in a bit of a flux. We'll, we'll come back to that one probably at some point in the future.